Joining us now, member of the Senate Foreign Relations and Judiciary Committees, Republican Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona. Thank you very much for being on the show. Senator, a lot to, lot to ask you about. Let's just go, uh, first of all, you've been concerned about Trump's tariffs. Right. Uh, Harley Davidson now talking about uh, not expanding the United right. States anymore. It said because of his tariffs, they are going to move production uh, in the future to Europe. Going to expand there. We're hearing this all over. Um, the, the, Volvo just opened a new plant in South Carolina. Great thing. But then promptly announced we may not be able to you know, hire the number of people that we thought we would. So if, if we're going to be imposing uh, new tariffs on the European Union on automobiles, they'll certainly retaliate. And what, what you find, and there have been studies that, that uh, verify this again and again, is when you try to, to uh, lower tariffs by imposing new tariffs and forcing uh, others to lower theirs, it rarely works. It's, it simply escalates. But, but and that's what's happening what, This now. is what is so hard to believe. We were talking about immigration before, and there just, there just are facts. If you even trust Donald Trump's own administration right. with studies that show that most of the things he's saying about immigration are lies. Well, let's talk about tariffs for a second. Democrats, most Democrats, almost all Republicans, almost all editorial pages know that what he is saying is a lie, know that what you just said has been an economic reality right. uh, for the past 50 years. So why isn't Congress stepping in? Well, that's, that's been uh, very troubling to many of us uh, in Congress I, on something so central to what Republicans stand for, free trade, uh, to just allow the president to go on and and treat Canada and Mexico as if they are national security threats. Last week he said uh, that Mexico just... did nothing, did nothing. This, right. And this, is, this shows you how much he floods the zone, that Mexico has done nothing but steal our jobs and right. send drugs to America. And then, of course, he deemed Canada a national security threat. Right. We met with the Canadian Foreign Minister Freeland uh, the mm -hmm. other day, members of the Christian. Foreign uh, Relations Committee. And it, just to, to hear her, it's, it's just sadness that they all have uh, there just uh, knowing that you are our allies so what are you going to fought beside yeah, you right and, and now you you declare as a national security threat and most republicans find that heinous that this yeah. president would do that Don't or they? against the tariffs <laughs> so what can you do about it because you know well, as as some people have pointed out for some time there only, there's only a Republican right. majority of two in the Senate. If you and Bob Corker or you or somebody right. else just says, listen, everything stops until we have a debate and a vote on tariffs. Right. Everything well, stops until we have a debate and a vote on seizing children at the border. Everything stops until we have a debate and a vote on you saying we should suspend due process. Right. I think that uh, approving new judges, more judges, is important. That's one of the roles. We are, as Senator McConnell says often, we're in the personnel business in the Senate. Most of the votes that we've had this year have been to, to advance the president's executive calendar, nominees for ambassadorships, cabinet level officials, and, uh, and also judges. That's important, but it can't be everything we do. And that's uh, where I think myself and a few others have come down on, saying that can't be everything we do. And if, if we're, we have to use that, to say, all right, let's not move forward on more judges and more of the president's executive calendar until we fulfill our constitutional obligation, mm -hmm. until we at least register our opinion um, on tariffs, for example, and let people know where we are and let the president know where we are. I, I think a lot of us are, are tired of saying we'll only take something up if the president agrees with right. it, like on immigration reform. Mm -hmm. We'll only take it up if he says he's going to sign it. Well, he said he wasn't going to sign Russia sanctions, but we passed it anyway. 98 to 2, he found a way to like it. Right. That, that's our role as the Article One branch. And, and so that, I think uh, if, if, if all we can do is to say, let's put the president's executive calendar on hold, judges, nominees uh, for other uh, appointments uh, on hold until we can actually vote on some of these things or until we get a commitment that on this bill, this appropriation measure, uh, this FAA bill, you may need a, a revenue bill to do a tariff uh, vote on, uh, then we simply won't go forward. Uh, you hate to have to go there, 
but in this case, it wouldn't be me saying, I'm going to put a hold on something. Uh, you don't have to do that. It would just be me saying, I will vote no. Mm -hmm. And that may be enough. So I do think that... Uh, do you have another Republican that will go with you? Well, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to speak for my colleagues. I know that Bob Corker has certainly uh, 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 been in, an important voice on us registering our opinion and, and saying something on tariffs. These tariffs, I can tell you, when Europe fully uh, you know, retaliates for what uh, mm -hmm. we're doing to them, when Canada and Mexico fully do, and we'll see that in the coming weeks, this is going to be big. And that costs, we are in that the nascent stages American of a full-scale sta yeah. trade war. Costs American and, jobs, and, and it's working-class uh, voters who pay for it the most. Let's exactly. move from tariffs to what's going on at the border, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to... A lot of people are going to have some uh, questions around the table about this, but let me just ask you about the fact that access is denied to these facilities where three-month-old children have been seized from their mothers uh, in New York City, driven 2,000 miles from the border up here, nine-year-olds. But uh, Again, uh, some uh, four- or five-month-old children with, with no identification on who their parents are, where they are. Shouldn't senators be able to go in and look at these facilities because right now they're being treated like black sites. Well, uh, you would certainly think so. You think a week after uh, the administration, well, I should have realized before that, but a week after the public really engaged on this, you still have instances where parents don't know where their very young child or toddler is or vice versa. Uh, that's unimaginable. And so, yeah. So, what can you all do? To get, what can you all do to get in? So, senators can go in and see. House members can go in to see. Um, if the American Red Cross, who has said that they stand willing and able to go in and inspect, but they have not been granted access by the administration, I expect that uh, that you'll be having senators today, um, because we're now almost a week into this. Uh, say, hey, we, we want access or we want these groups to have access. And I, I just don't know how the administration will say no. I, I just don't know how they can now. The president has tweeted um, <clears throat> this. Senator Flake, I've tried to stay uninvolved with the Department of Justice and FBI, although I do not legally have to. Because of the now totally discredited and very expansive witch hunt currently going on. But you, ha you do have to ask why the DOJ and FBI aren't giving over requested documents. Uh, so first of all, that of course is, most of that is false. He has interfered uh, nonstop. Uh, he talks about uh, how it's a very expensive witch hunt, costs more to pay for his trips to his golf courses than this investigation so far, which is, my God, I think it's like maybe uh, uh, about a tenth of, of Ken Starr's investigation. Mm -hmm. um, how do members of the Senate ensure that, and certainly some Republicans have come out and been really strong on this, and uh, the, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee yes. yeah. has said, let Mueller finish investigation. Yeah. What, do, do, do you feel like the, the Senate will stand firm to make sure that he can finish his investigation, Robert I, Mueller? I sure hope so. Uh, I'm on the Judiciary Committee. We did pass legislation to protect the special counsel. I don't know if it's constitutional. We'll, uh, we'll see in the coming uh, you know, months if that's needed. I hope that it isn't. I hope that that just signaled to the administration we will stand here. There's a, a line in the sand at some point. But the president is uh, continuing to try to muddy the waters, try to uh, you know, engage the public against the special counsel. Gratefully, I think that the, the judiciary, that institution has held. People have recused themselves when they should have. They're moving on. The special counsel is moving on. Um, so, we, and the press has certainly, I, I think, held the institution uh, at holding the president's feet to the fire, as they should hold every president, uh, regardless of party, to feet to the fire. But uh, what Congress does, I have been concerned, certainly, about the House and the Intel Committee and the partisan role it seems to play. The Senate Intel Committee's done a good job on a bipartisan yes, basis to move forward. Uh, so uh, Chairman, I, I see Chairman Richard Burr that's work, right. working uh, with his uh, ranking Warner. member. Yeah. Uh, they, they've <coughs> they've done a Warner. good job. So you, you see that. I have been concerned that more recently uh, more members of the Senate, more Republicans have said, all right, Mueller, wrap this thing up. Uh, I think the, the response ought to be carry it through and uh, go where the facts go. And, and we'll see. But uh, 
I, I, I'm hopeful that the Congress will, will hold as an institution that should hold the executive branch to account. Mike. Senator, I used to be able to name every member of the United States Senate across decades. I used to be able right. to do it. And some of them, I'm sure you are aware of this, were true giants, both in the Senate and in American history. So my question to you now is why do so many members, your colleagues in the United States Senate, specifically, seemingly are afraid of a tweet from the President of the United States? Well, it is remarkable, uh, and I, I wonder the same thing, why we don't more jealously guard our institutional prerogative and say, you know, hey, we're the Article I branch. Mm. Let's act like it. Yeah. And, and let's not be swayed or let's not uh, determine what legislation we consider based on what the president has tweeted or based on what he says he will support because that can change over time. I was very involved in immigration. I have been for a long time, but in the DACA fix that we tried to get, uh, we had a changing position almost hourly uh, for a couple of days there from the White House. So uh, trying to divine where the White House is at any given moment on some of these issues is very difficult. And we shouldn't, in the Senate in particular, it's always been the body that with six-year terms, you, you see beyond the next hill you see beyond the next administration, you're a body that never goes out because there are always two-thirds who don't stand for election. Um, and uh, it, it's painful, frankly, to see us become so supine and, and willing to let the administration go on policy or other matters. But you're paying a political price, and you have chosen that path so that you s can speak honestly and speak right. your mind. And Republicans may well lose your seat when it comes up for re-election in the midterm, do you think that Republicans are still going to be able to hold the Senate? I, it's difficult uh, to lose the Senate, given the map that we have. Uh, you know, it was such a bad year for Republicans in 2012 when I first ran. There's just so few up, and the, the races are in the right places for Republicans. Uh, but it's, it's not impossible, and, and that's certainly the concern. And the problem you have, obviously, is you have primaries where... Uh, you know, 90 percent of the Republican Party is with the president and firmly. Um, and, and when you pull and ask, what's the most important issue to you? It used to be jobs or the economy. Now, overwhelmingly, it's are you with the president? Mm -hmm. It has become that tribal. And, and those who voice dissent with some of the president's policies or fail to condone his behavior at all times are suspect. And, and it's not just uh, you know worrying about a tweet from the president. It's worrying going, about going to the next precinct meeting, um, where be questioned: Are you with the president? Why aren't you with the president? Mm. Senator Jeff Flake, thank you very much for being on. Thank, thank you. you. Much. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.